with you today. PSA, Pastor Travis did this last week, but I want to give a quick public service announcement. You are now less than one week away. You are four days away, I'll just put it that way, from Valentine's Day. Okay? Great day. She excited. Her man getting her something good. Great day. She already knows what it is, too, apparently. Listen, if you don't have something, guys, listen, if you don't have something, 1-800-Flowers, your best friend. 1-800-Flowers.com. Don't let her see you doing it, though, because you need to let her think you already got it under control. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have something planned yet, uh, uh, go right after this service. <laughs> All right? Use your smartphone. Get something going, okay? Uh, Target has giant stuffed animals for $15. I'll just tell you that, okay? You're welcome. I love you. You're, I got your back today. Uh, no, so excited to be in a relationship series over the next few weeks. And uh, let me just say this real quick, man. You guys look amazing out there. Uh, we, have, we had an issue in our first service that I need to let you know about uh, pre, pre, uh, pre-message today. And the issue was this, is that we had uh, so many people in the first service that we had to find places to seat them uh, after. Come on. You guys are doing that in this one, too. And so I just, I just love it. I love it. God is doing something so amazing. I hope you felt the Spirit of God during worship this morning. Uh, just, just the chains were falling. Uh, so much bondage was breaking. Healing was taking place. Restoration. So we're, we're excited about that. I want to tell you this, though. Uh, you're catching week one of the Vow, a brand new relationship series on love, uh, sex, and relationships. And I, I just want to, there's a few disclaimers. One, uh, we have an amazing kids ministry that meets every Sunday morning at 10 and 11.30 during the service. And I encourage you to check your kids into that area because I don't know if you've been around here very often, but I'm not good at holding things uh, that need to be said. And, and I just put them out there so we can all understand them. And so I, I don't want anybody to get uncomfortable, but I want, I want you to understand that you need to be here for this. God is really doing something amazing. I watched couples and, and singles and people all over the room in the, in the 10 o'clock. God was changing their lives and is continuing to do so and started something. Also, you're coming in on week one. I want you to commit to this series. Commit to being here for this series. It's going to be an amazing time. And commit to bring somebody with you. We have brand new invite cards on the seat, and there's so many couples. And here's why this series is so important and why I'm telling you all that, right? Uh, It's not, listen, I'm going to be real honest. Just filling chairs doesn't do much for me. It doesn't mean much to me. But what does matter is whenever we fill the kingdom and we serve people so that they can know Jesus a little bit better in their lives. And that's what it's all about for us. And, and we just finished Be About It. How many of you guys enjoyed Be About It? That series right there, man. So, so good. It, it jacked me up, and, and I was the one that God chose to preach it, uh, most of it. Pastor Travis brought in a phenomenal word one week. And, and I talked to staff, and, 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 and I told him, I said, I think I might expand that series. I might just nix the vow and go straight through uh, three more weeks of, of Be About It. And as I prayed about it and I thought about it, I looked in our county, in our city, I looked in our church, I looked across the world. And guys, I'm going to be honest, I really believe the one area where the enemy is consistently attacking people is in their relationships. And here's why, because if he can get us isolated, he can probably make us at least feel defeated, if not be defeated. And so, because here's the thing, we say that around here all the time, and I want you to go ahead and turn in your Bibles uh, to Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, and we're going to bounce a lot today, so hopefully you're taking notes, but uh, we say this phrase a lot around here, especially talking about life groups, and it's this, we weren't intended to do life what? Alone. We were intended to do life together, not life alone, right? And, and Because isolation uh, creates opportunity uh, for the enemy to defeat us, and, 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 and the truth is, We weren't intended to do life alone, but the truth of the matter is, and you've probably felt like this, I know I have, sometimes it's probably, it just feels like it'd be easier to do life alone, though, wouldn't it? Anybody with me? Come on, y'all got to wake up in the room today. It's practical, it's laid back, it's easy today. You know, it just feels like it'd be easier sometimes, because I know we go into marriage, right, and we feel like we'll always have the heart emojis in our eyes for our spouse. We just do. We feel like it would always be great. You know, we're always going to wake up and love each other. But the truth of the matter is, they get on your nerves sometimes. Anybody in the room understand that phrase? You know, they just get on your nerves sometimes. Y'all like, Pastor, you can't say that. Yeah, I can. Because I'm married. And, And it's hard to live with me. I'm hyper. I'm random. I do weird things a lot. I know that catches you off guard. 
But like at 12 o'clock, I could be about to fall asleep taking a nap at my computer doing work. And at 1 o'clock, I'm running a marathon down the road or something. Let's get real. I'm not running. But I'm doing something weird. Right? And like, it's just, that's how I am. My wife, I know. Like when we were dating, and we'll talk a little bit about this next week. But when we were dating, it was cute. When we're married, she's like, will you just chill out for a second and go with a plan? Will you do something you know, and there's certain things that it just gets that way, you know. And, and I want to give you some groundbreaking news right off the beginning, right here. You ready? Men and women are different. Like really different. Really, it's okay. Some of you are like, I don't know if I should applaud that and say amen. She's right there. It's not really that groundbreaking. They're different. We think differently. We comp- Men are great at compartmentalizing everything. Women, it's like this, this circuit board that is always going off and triggering, triggering 15,000 other thoughts, right? And so, like, I'll say things to my wife, and she's like, but it made me think about this, this, and this. And I'm like, that has nothing to do with what I even said, right? And entering marriage in relation, y'all, y'all feel uncomfortable today. It's okay, Entering marriage is a little different, right? Because you feel like, you feel like you're going to all see eye to eye at the same time. Listen, here's what happens every time, right? Women, you, as soon as you started to understand what a marriage was, like what a wedding was, you had it figured out. You knew the dress and the colors and the cake and the flavor of the cake, right? You knew where and what the venue would look like. You knew the flowers. You knew there'd be a Ken doll that could do anything you wanted him to do, walking down the aisle, smiling with straight teeth, and they're white and beautiful, and you had it all figured out, the venue and everything, right? I saw some men hold, pull their wife closer like, yeah, you got that baby right here, <laughs> right? You had it figured out. You know how I know that? Because you tell me that all the time. And then men... You think that we, th- you know, women, you think that we have it figured out. So when y'all start telling us your dreams, y'all are like, what do you think? We're like, uh-huh. Like, it freaks me out a little bit. Listen, I just want to tell you, if you're not married yet, you can just take your man to the courthouse, sign the papers, and get us to the honeymoon, and we're okay. I promise. Right? Because y'all have spent time planning. We spent time, you're, dream- you're dreaming about a marriage. We're dreaming about sex twice a day. And many of you are still dreaming. (laughs) He just said that from the stage. (laughs) Yes, I did. You know, and and we (laughs) we go through this, and I just want you to feel that it's different and there's tensions there. And the sad thing about marriage is it's so fun. That's not sad, but it's so fun and it's so great, but the sad part is statistically only half make it to the ever after that you pray promised and that you prayed for and that you dreamed of and that you dropped 15 billion dollars on right and we get to a place to where only half make it and and half struggle to get there if they do get there and it's difficult and here's the thing I want to tell you today most marriages are not doomed They're not going in a bad direction. They're not terrible. It's most marriages are not doomed. Most marriages are misprioritized. The priorities are off. The priorities are different. He's got a different set of priorities. She's got a different set of priorities. And none of them are in line with the way that the Bible and God wanted them to be to begin with. And I just want to tell you, if you're single, if you're divorced, if you're engaged, if you're separated, if you're happily married, unhappily married, if you're single and looking, if you're single and not looking, however it is, I want to tell you, if we'll get this stuff right, Over the next three weeks, can I tell you, I promise you, I promise you with everything inside of me, I promise you it will dramatically change your love life. Now, I'm not telling you if you're single, you're going to walk out of here with a man at the end of three weeks, okay? Or a woman. We're ready eight, not ready date, okay? And so, that was a good one. Uh, Doug, where were you, man? You left me hanging. Um, And so, I just want to talk about three vows this series. Just three. The vow of priority. The vow of pursuit. And the vow of partnership. And that's why I say you need to be here all three weeks because all three build on each other and create an opportunity. Because marriage has the opportunity and can be great. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care if your parents didn't make it, your grandparents didn't make it. Maybe you're the only one in your family line that has made it as long as you have. Great! 
Break the system. Break the generational curses. Get that stuff. I hear the chains falling. Like, get it. It doesn't matter. Marriage can be amazing. Marriage can be so fun. And it, I love that video because marriage can be frustrating. It can be sexy. It can be fun. It can be um, angering. It can be all these things. But you know what? It can also be godly. And it can also be amazing, and it can be incredible. And I want to talk to you about that today because great marriages are possible. In most relationships, most marriages are not doomed. They're just misprioritized because we grow up in a Hollywood and a Disney world, which is fine. I love movies. Any, we got any movie buffs? I'm good with I don't watch a lot of movies, but when I watch them, I like it. You know, and I enjoy getting lost in that. But movies and, and, and TV shows, The Bachelor, praise God, I need to preach a sermon on that one. But... <laughs> tell us if we find the one if you just find the one you'll be fulfilled in life he's got to be buff perfect hair perfect teeth perfect eyes everything right if you find the one you'll be fulfilled and I'm here to tell you something it's not that easy because the one you're looking for is not flesh and blood. It's the God in the heavens that sits on the throne as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. It is God. He is the one. You're not looking for the one. And the problem is, is we're looking for someone to fill a void that only he can. We're looking for someone to fill this spot in our heart and our lives where if I could just find him or if I could just find her, like everything will be okay. No. Because we spend, listen to me, I want to talk to singles for a minute or engaged or whatever you classify yourself as. I want to talk to you and I want to tell you this. Don't lose your identity in the hope that you'll find somebody else. Because it's not worth it. you got to know who you are in Christ before you can know who they are with you. Because you won't even know you. You won't even understand love. Many of us are trying to give love, but we've never felt love or encountered love because we've never submitted our lives to the Father to begin with. The author and the finisher of love. The one that started it all, that will end it all, and the one that loves us unconditionally. And so we're in this place to where priorities are an issue, and we've got to understand this, that God is your one. Your spouse is your second. Come on, you got to know that. you got to know that. You need to write that down. You need to put that somewhere so that it's just down in us. It's, it's just, we get it. God is your one. You're not seeking the one. The one is waiting for a relationship with you. You are not walking through a bar hoping you find a great person. Stop going to places that don't even house people that you're looking for. Come on, somebody. Stop doing things to win their heart that the person you're looking for wouldn't even do. You know what I'm saying? God is your one. Your spouse has to be your second. Some of you are sitting there going, well, pastor, that just kind of makes me feel less than. No, because if I can love him with everything I've got, then I can love you with everything i got. Because my love comes out of who I am in him. Are you with me? It, 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 God is our one. Our spouse is our second. Luke 10 and 27 says this. I love it so much. And we're actually doing a series on this right after our Easter experiences. It's, it says this. And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Please pick up on this. Leave it up for just a few minutes, guys. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, right? In other words, let's just make it simple. Love God with everything you've got. And then, and then love your neighbor. And then love, you can't love someone else until you have really learned to love the lover of all. You can't give somebody something that you don't know what it is. You can't give somebody something you don't have. Love him with everything you've got. And then love somebody else. Singles, I want to tell you this. Soon to be married. Meant to be married. One day be married. Pray to be married. We'll get there eventually be married. I want to tell you this. Listen. Become the one that the one you're looking for is looking for. Let me say that again. Become the one that the one you're looking for is looking for. Find yourself in Christ. 
Don't find yourself in an identity with somebody that you just fell in love with because they got those baby blue eyes and that blonde hair. None of that matters whenever if their character is not there, if their identity in Christ is not there. Because here's the thing, they can fool you for a season, but it always comes out in the light. Every time. Know who you are. Don't win a heart. Become a follower. Don't win their heart. Become a follower first. Know who you are. That's why there's so many problems in marriages. I am convinced because we don't know who we are before we actually get into it. We don't know who we are. We've got priorities messed up, so we need to promise or vow this. I vow that God will be my first and my spouse will be my second. Can I promise you this? If you'll vow that in your life, if you'll vow that to your spouse, it's all going to come full circle in just a few moments. If you'll vow that, I promise you, everything about your relationship status will elevate to such a level that you'll have things that you dreamed of when you were five years old and the innocence is there. You'll have, you'll have the relationship that you hoped for, the husband that you prayed for, the wife that you prayed for. And I know some of you are sitting out there and going, yeah, but I'm already married. This sounds like it's for singles. No, it's for all of us. Because priorities can always be reshifted. Priorities can always change. Priorities can always change. And we, you know, there's a point. Our priorities get mixed up. And can I just, I just want to be honest. If, if God is first and spouse is second, can I tell you that there's something missing in that for a lot of us? Your kids are not above your spouse. I just need to tell you this. Listen to me. Listen, I get asked this question all the time. All the time. Where do my kids fit in? Listen, your kids are a temporary assignment. Your marriage is a lifelong commitment. Your kids are meant, in Genesis 2, 24, it says, leave mom and dad and cleave to the spouse. Why? Because they will be shot into the world to make a difference one day. I hear people come up to me that are older couples, and they say this, man, our kids moved out and everything changed with my spouse. That's because your, your kids were priority over your spouse, and you stopped learning and loving your spouse. Be a, be a student of your spouse. Listen, I'm just going to be real honest. It's really hard to be intimate with your spouse when your kid's laying in the bed between you. Come on now. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. This is just truth today because I get asked this question a lot, and I just told Megan, I said, baby, I feel like i got to answer this question because I get asked it all the time. Can I tell you something? And I'm going to be really bold with this statement. If your kids get more priority than your spouse, then it's out of line. You know why so many marriages walk around and they feel neglected? It's because their kids get everything. Oh, I'll buy him a Milky Way. I'll buy him this. I'll buy him that. I'll do this. I'll do that. But yet your spouse is sitting over there going, I just need five minutes of attention. Just, just like look at me the way you used to look at me and I would be okay. But you can't because you're worried about, are they doing this? Are they doing that? Is my kid okay? Is my kid okay? Listen, I'm not telling you to go home and look at your kid and go, I'm locking you in the bedroom. And the pastor said, I got to spend time with mom and dad and I'll miss you. Here's some granola bars. Eat them. No. Can I tell you, parenting your kid is supposed to be a joint effort. But it's hard to parent them whenever you don't spend enough time together to be on the same page. Your spouse cannot be, I mean, your kids cannot be above your spouse. It's got to be the other way around. And we get it mixed up so much. I have to learn this. I told my wife this. Whenever every, every kid, we've got three kids, right? And Pete, you guys need to quit asking me when the next one's coming because I ain't that fool. you are like, when's the next one? Y'all think I'm crazy. I know I'm crazy, but I ain't that crazy. I told her with every kid, seriously, we have this conversation. And we'll look at each other and say this. Remember, this kid is coming into my world. I'm not coming into his this kid's coming into my world. This kid ain't popping up a tent and living in my bed. No, let's be honest. We need to have these conversations, don't we? Pastor Mark's over here. He's been married for 57 years. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you, man. How long has it been? 43 years right there. His wife was in the first service with us. They serve on our prayer team. They're great stewards of what God's doing here at Radiate Church. 43 years, and I guarantee you they had similar conversation. These kids came into our world. We're not coming into theirs. I'm not neglecting the love of my spouse for somebody that's going to leave me in 15 years. You know what I'm saying? It's priorities. It's how do we get this thing right? How do we figure this thing out? And, and here's the issue a lot of us do, and I want to show you what this looks like, okay? You still, you still love me, right? 
Okay, some of y'all like, I don't know yet. <laughs> That's all right. I love you, and as Miss Pooh on, 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 the, on the Facebook says, and there's nothing you can do about that. All right, this is your life, and it's full, right? It's full of so much that's going on in our lives. We got just things that, that, that are just stagnant and static that we have to take care of. We got to have a job. We got bills to pay, right? And we got ministry to do that takes money, and we got all these things to do. So I got, God's got to get resources through me with a, a job. But then we have all these things that are just, they just are what they are, right? And then we got other priorities. We got... You know, we'll throw in the gym because we got to take care of our body. It's the temple, and we got the gym, and we got you know school, and we're trying to study, and we got life group, and then we got oh man, I gotta serve this Sunday, and we got all these things going on. I gotta spend some time with the boys. You know what I'm saying? We're going axe throwing this weekend, which is kind of somebody said to me recently. I want to go axe throwing and put a picture on the target, and I just looked down. I was like, we got prayer service coming up. We need to exercise the demons. Anyway, we got, um, and so we, uh, uh, so we, <laughs> too much espresso this morning. And we got all these things going on, right? Xbox with the boys. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All kinds of things. And I'll fix the gym, fit the gym, all these things going on. And before the end of the day, we look at our 24 hours, and we can't even hardly fit everything in. So I don't, I don't even know how this works. Like, it doesn't work. And it's priorities. And then we go, all right, I got God, but I ain't got nowhere to, I ain't got time to spend time talking to God. I ain't got time for church and the Bible and all these things. I can't do all that stuff. But what would happen if we looked and we said, I need to start over. I need to start over with something empty. And I started going, let's put God in there. Let's put church and serving in there and, and, and anything that relates to growing me to God because if I'm going to grow a godly family and I'm going to be a godly person, then that's got to be first, right? And so I do all these things and I start putting, you know, I got a temple and the Bible says take care of the temple, so I'm going to I'm gonna go work out and I'm going to go do these things and I'm going to quit drinking bang energy drinks every other drink and I'm going to do all this stuff, right? Got all these things going on and we start putting our kids, our family, our spouse, we put our God, our friends, our relationships. What if we put all that in first, right? And then we took the rest of life, and we started pouring it in there. And the amazing thing is, if it falls out, who cares? Because the most important things are already in. And I can fit more of life in, in an undramatic, unfiltered, Less stressful way because my priorities are in first and life comes next. Are you with me? And wouldn't that be so much better because now instead of my husband getting the least of me or my wife getting the least of me because I took out all my energy and I spent it on my coworkers and I spent it on my boss and I come home in a bad mood because of work. And what if she was such a priority or he was such a priority that they don't get the least, they get the first. What if I don't try to fit God in, I fit everything else that were in around God? What if my kids, it wasn't, get out of my face, I'm aggravated, I'm in a bad mood today. What if they were such a priority that we, that doesn't affect me? Come on, are you with anybody? What if this was it right here? And you know what the difference is? Priorities. That's it, Priorities. It's just changing and shifting our, our, our focus and our, our things around. And here's the thing that happens when we get things out of, the right, the, out of the right position. So we put them in the wrong positions in our life. And the priorities get shifted around. We begin, and we do this with our spouse. And I'm going to tell you what happens when we put our spouse first and God second. Here's what happens. Or our kids first and our spouse second. Or our kids first. Or however it is, right? Here's the thing that happens. We begin to idolize and demonize. Because what's an idol? An idol is anything that's above everything else. God says you should have no other idols before me. That means if my spouse is above God, I'm idolizing my, God, my spouse, which means I am walking in sin. Come on. That's just truth. That's gospel. Now, God forgives that, and he, he brings us to a place of redemption. But I can't look at them and go, I need you to fulfill the place of the number one priority of God in my life because we begin to idolize them, and then we demonize them when they can't live up to it. You fell short. You let me down. You hurt my feelings. You did this, and you do, did that, and it's all because they're human. But the thing is, is because they're human, they're going to let you down, but you put them in God's role. And so God is perfect, and because he's perfect and holy, and he never lets us down, and he's always there walking with us, we expect them to never do it because they are fitting his role. And so now we go, I'm mad at you. I can't believe you did that to me. And he's like, I don't even know what I did. 
So for three days, you get ticked off and you walk away. You know what I'm saying? Because you idolized and then you demonized. And it happens just like that because priorities are out of whack. And can I tell you, the reason that a, a person can't be above God is, number one, he's God. Number two, people will let you down. Listen, you're not always, I said it earlier, you're not always going to wake up feeling that much in love with your spouse. The heart emojis ain't there every morning. You don't always think that their morning breath is sexy. You want to look at some of them and go, Crest is your best friend. Get out of my face. Some of them wake up and it looks like a rat came in there and built a nest in their head. You're like, what happened to you? I'll get Terminix out here tomorrow. You know? And, and we get disappointed by that. Baby, you're supposed to do this for me, and you're supposed to be that, and you're supposed to do that. But it's not even, the, it's not even realistic, the, the expectations we're holding them to, because we're holding them to God's expectations. You said you'd never leave me. I never said that. In fact, I'm probably going to leave you stranded, not walk away from the marriage, but I'm, there's going to be moments you're walking through something I don't know anything about, and I can't hold your hand, because I don't even know what you're thinking. Because I'm not God. I was picking with a friend of mine earlier. He was telling me, Earlier this week, he was telling me that he Googled something about uh, a woman. And he found an answer. And I looked at him and I said, here's what Google needs to do in those situations. Google needs to have this pop-up that comes up and says this. We have no results. <laughs> we can't figure it out. And if you can, let us know. Because we're that different. And there will be moments you, he lets you down, but there will also be moments she lets you down. Now, next week, we're talking about pursuit and how you do that through marriage and through the consummation and through the commitment of marriage. But the truth of the matter is this. Priorities are so important, and here's why. Because most of the things that destroy marriages are not bad things. They're good things misprioritized. They're good things that are not prioritized. Let me show you. Relationships outside of marriage are a good thing. They're a healthy thing. Guys, you need guys that you connect with and go hang out with and be a guy with. Just go throw axes and play golf and play Xbox or whatever you do, right? Within the context of biblical understanding and, 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 and in the right holy way, right? Go be guys. Guys, uh, girls, you need girls that you go get your nails done with, go shopping with, you know, whatever y'all talk about, whatever you talk about. I don't even ask my wife. When she goes out with the girls, I don't even look at her and go, so what'd y'all talk about? Because I, I ain't going to understand it anyway. It just don't make sense to me. She'll start telling me, and I'm like, my mind is numb. Because here, here's the thing. You need those relationships. However, listen, listen, listen. When we put those relationships above our spouse is when adultery comes into play. When adultery comes into play. And, and, and listen, the Bible tells me this, that if I look upon another person lustfully, I'm committing adultery on my spouse. When I put time on internet sites that I shouldn't prioritize over my spouse, I'm committing adultery. And well, I'm not married, so I'm in the clear. No, your future spouse too. They deserve the purity of your heart just like anybody else. They don't need to go into a marriage being compared to somebody that ain't even real. And so the truth of the matter is, relationships are good, but when they're out of the priority of the way God intended above our spouse, then they become, then they become dangerous, right? Money is good. There's nothing wrong with money. It, some of you are like, money? The Bible says money is a sin. No, it says the love of money is a sin because when you begin to love it more than anything else, it becomes an idol, and everything you do goes above that. So I'll, I'll chase a career before I'll chase my spouse. I'll chase a career before I serve God because money, I love money. I'm idolizing money. And so it's the priorities. It's not the bad things. And many times, can I just, I just want to be honest because this is such a question. We can idolize our kids and make them the priority over our spouse. They are not meant to be that. If you want to love your kids, listen to me. If you want to love your kids well, love your spouse well. If you want to teach them what a godly marriage looks like, live one. If you want them to be committed to God, then teach them how to be committed to God and to church and to spouse and to love and to grace and to mercy and to forgiveness and to everything else because it's all about what you live in front of them. 
Your kids don't need to know how to love themselves more. They got that under control. We all do. We're born into that. But what they do need to know is how to love others better. How to love God better. You want your daughter to know what a loving husband looks like? Show her. You want your son to know how to solve problems the right way? Show him. You don't do it by buying them something every time they go to the store and then you look at your spouse and go, I ain't got nothing for you. I gave them all the energy I got today. I don't have time for you. I got a headache. I'm tired. I ain't got time for you. Don't talk to me about that mess. I don't have the bandwidth for it today. No. You want to know how to love your kids? I'm telling you right now, this is biblical. Love your spouse. Men, I want to talk to you for a minute because here's the deal. As a couple, we are meant to set the priorities. Singles, I just feel like I need to say this. Listen, do you know why it's so dangerous to commit marital acts before marriage? Because you create a soul tie to somebody that won't be there. And when you get into a marriage, you get to a place to where now you got to cut baggage off for the first year. (laughs) And they don't even get the best of you. Let me get the best. Ephesians 5, 25. I'm getting back to the men now. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Guys, as, as couples, it's our job to set the priorities together. But men, listen to me today. It's our job to protect them. It's our job to protect them. I don't have kids, so that part is good. Good, you got one thing off your list, but you got 15 others to fight for. Some of us need to go home. Some of you wives whose husbands don't follow God, you need to go home and go ask for me in my house. We gonna serve the Lord. And I will pray for you, husband or wife, until you begin to, to attend and serve the Lord with me. Attend church and serve the Lord with me. But listen, men, we got to fight. Many of us will go, I'll give my life for her or for them. I'll give my life if anybody messes with them. Let me take it a step further. How about instead of just giving your life, live your life for them. Live your life for them, men. We set the culture. We set that we are not thermostats, of the, I mean thermometers of this world. Because this world will tell us, hey, just do what you feel like when you feel like it. Man, forget that junk. It's become common knowledge where people don't even enjoy marriage anymore because we're going to get divorced anyway. We're walking out anyway. Man, forget that stuff. That ain't kingdom. That's not God. Fight. Fight for it. You know what I'm most encouraged about? It's as couples come to me as a pastor and and I send them to counseling and all these things because I just can't help some things like I'm not a good counselor I'm, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual God that can bring things out of people that, and I'm called to develop and release so we do these things but you know what I'm most encouraged about there are more and more couples that look at me and go I'm not quitting don't tell me why I should walk away tell me how I can keep fighting and I look at them and go I can do something with that because t- tough times come Man, we got we to gotta fight. I remember my first year of marriage was one of the hardest years of my life. I'm not shy about that. I tell every couple that asks me for marriage advice that. First year of marriage, it was a hard, one of the hardest years. You know why? Because I discovered something about myself I didn't like. But I wasn't smart enough at the time to just fix it. I just wanted to blame it on somebody else. I was selfish. I had spent 20, how old was I? 24 years of my life, 25 years of my life, worrying about me. I could play Xbox when I wanted. I could go play golf when I wanted. I could buy any pair of shoes I wanted. I could buy any clothes. I could go anywhere I wanted, do anything I wanted. Didn't matter. I ain't got nobody. I have nobody to answer to. Then you get into marriage and it's like, oh, Every decision I make 
I fixed somebody else now. Wasn't ready for that. Y'all, we fall all the time. All the time. And I remember one night, as vividly as I can, we were renting a house. I even remember the art on the walls in the bedroom. We were yelling, being stupid. Luckily, we didn't have kids at the time. I took my ring off. And I threw it on the bed. And I looked her dead in her eye. And I said, I didn't sign up for this. This ain't what this is supposed to be like. And I will not live my life like this. You can have my ring. You can have anything that we bought together. I'm done. And I will, I, your pastor walked out the door. I'm not doing this. She blew my phone up. I ignored her phone calls. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all had all holy right now. Y'all like, I did that last week. Wouldn't text her back. A couple hours, I just drove around. Came back. We talked it out. And I looked at her and I said, we will not give up. We may have another moment just like this, but we won't stop. We won't give up. We won't quit because I promised you my life. I remember, I promised you my life. And I looked down and I said, not only did I promise you my life, I promised God my life with you. And I promised your mom and dad I'd do everything I could to take care of you. Because here's what we got to remember. Whoever you marry is not only God's son and daughter, but is somebody else's son and daughter too. And they've entrusted their heart with your hands. Don't quit. Don't stop. Make them a priority. Some of you need to go home today. Some of us put it that way need to go home today and look at our spouse and say this there's some new things around here that are new priorities I don't really care if our kids don't become an NBA star because we didn't sign them up to play at the Y but they will grow up and love Jesus and they will grow up and know how to be a godly man or a godly woman because they're going to see it exhibited in this house today I'll do what I got to do to go where I got to go to do what you called me to do that's what it takes we need, some of us need to go home, and we need to say this. Listen, I heard somebody say this week, church doesn't send me to heaven. Correct. Salvation does. But it's really hard to stay strong in the Lord whenever you're away from everybody that loves Him. Some of us need to go home and go, we're not skipping church anymore. Somebody's got to be deathly ill or we got to be on vacation. But we ain't skipping church. In fact, we're going to get involved in a life group. We're going to serve on a team. And we'll do it as a family. I don't care if your three-year-old kid is carrying something around here. We'll find something for him to carry to serve so that you can do it as a family. Because the family needs to be involved in the work of God. As for me, in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to commit to church. We're going to commit to the Bible. We're going to commit to pray. We're going to commit to do all these things. We're going to be in a life group. We're going to do all this stuff. You know why? Because it starts with priorities. And I see people all the time, oh man, I had a busy week. Can I get into this for a second? I had a busy week. Man, travel ball is crazy right now. Couldn't make it to church. Don't be upset when your kid grows up and idolizes sports more than God. Can we get into this? Because what we prioritize, we permit. Don't be upset when your kid grows up and loves social media so much, but doesn't pay attention to anything that God has to say because you're sitting on your phone during church and scrolling Facebook. Here's what I'm trying to get at today. I'm not beating anybody up. I don't even know if you do that, to be quite honest with you. I don't know anybody that does that, but here's the truth. What we do in increments, our kids do in excess. And I just want you to hear today, priorities matter. Go home and look at your spouse and go, I'm going to show you your priority. In fact, some of us need to go and apologize to our spouse. Wives, some of you need to go home and go, look, I've put our kids above you. And I'm sorry. I'll fix it. I'll show you, I'll honor you, I'll love you, I'll show you your priority. Teenagers, don't you ever, listen to me, don't you ever give somebody your heart that doesn't make you a priority. Never do it. Singles, don't you ever give somebody your heart that doesn't make you a priority. But first, doesn't make God a priority. Some men, we need to go home and look at our wives and go, you know what? I have not done my part, and I will fight for the priorities in this thing. 
I'll protect them with everything I got. I will not just die for you. I will live for you. But first I'll live for him. Because of what I become in him flows into you. Flows into you. Are you with me today? Priorities matter. I want to leave you with this and we're going to pray. It's easy to make excuses. But love makes a way. It's easy. I didn't sign up for this. This ain't what I want. Take this and go. It's easy to make excuses. We can justify anything. Take scripture out of context, preaching out of context. We can justify anything if we get along with the right people. But they said I should do this. I don't care what did God say. It's easy to make excuses, but love always makes a way. So today I know you're sitting there, some of you, and you're going... I haven't prioritized this thing the way that I need to. I haven't done this the way that I need to. And, and some of you are going, he said that sports is a sin. No, I said whenever it comes above God and spouse, it's an idol and an issue. Priorities matter. And so I know you're sitting here going, I want my life to be prioritized the right way. And I'm going to give you a moment right now to just bow your heads. Because God's been working in your spirit. And I watched across this entire room today, in 10 o'clock, I watched couples hold their hands up saying, I've got to get this thing right. I will do what i got to do because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord with everything we have. If you're sitting in the room today and you're a couple, and you're sitting with your spouse, and you'll say, I've gotten it wrong. I've messed this thing up so much. So much to where I, 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 they don't even trust me or anything anymore. But you're saying, I, I'll do what i got to do. God, if you'll just illuminate the areas in my life where I need to reprioritize and do this thing right, God, if you'll do this, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll change what I need to change and be who I need to be and all this stuff. If that's you, i got, I got singles in a minute, but if that's you and you're a couple sitting there, will you grab their hand? And will you, as a couple, hold that thing up right where you are all over the room in symbolic nature to say, God, I'm right here. Help me. Now, hold them up. Don't let them go. If you're single in the room, maybe your spouse isn't with you today, or maybe you're not even dating or, or anything, but you go, I need to prioritize this now and get it right. If that's you, would you hold your hand up right where you are all over the room? Yeah, come on. Hold them up. I'm going to pray over you, Father. Right now, I pray that the Spirit of God would just illuminate the areas in our life where we have to reprioritize. We have to do it right. God, let us put you first, spouse second. And God, you show us everything else. But God, let us just seek you with all that we have so that we can love them with all that we have. And God, I just pray over marriages right now. I believe trust is being restored. I believe adoration is coming back. I believe sexual attraction is coming back. All those things. God, I just pray right now over marriages that need that in their lives. As they reprioritize, God, that you are healing and restoring. And God, I pray for every person that's in the room that says, I need to do this in the future. God, I pray that you would begin to help them set a solid foundation for who they need to be in you so that when they find that person, God, that you are already in it. Let us do it the right way. With you, with your promises, and with your word. And God, I thank you for what you're doing. And if God has done something in your life today, will you just put your hands together and make some noise for what he's doing in your life? Come on, church.